if you've not uh, been to a Kingdom Connection breakfast before, what, what we get the privilege of doing is, is hearing how God has worked and spoken in someone's life specifically uh, in their personal life as well as their work life. And so um, we have the privilege of having Missy Stagers with us this morning. So give well, Missy a warm welcome here. Uh, I, I had the privilege of meeting Missy. It's been many years back. Um, uh, she and her husband had moved to San Antonio, and he ended up working in the same real estate company where I was working. And Rick, uh, her husband, was in a, in a small group that we had in our office. And we got to meet them and get to know them uh, and have kept in touch with them through the years. And so uh, Missy has a, a very, uh, I mean, all, all her stories are obviously unique, but she has a unique story in that when she came to San Antonio, she, her intention wasn't, I don't think, to get in real estate, was it? Yeah, so she, she went to work uh, for a company. Why don't you tell us a little bit about just how that started of getting involved even in the real estate. She was in residential real estate, so how did that get, get started? Uh, I got started in real estate, uh, not really doing real estate, but doing marketing for a real estate company in California for about 18 months and then moved here uh, called the temp agency second day after we were here and said, you know, what kind of jobs are available? That was at 11. I had an interview at 1 uh, with Sheldon Gooden Company. Some of you may know who Sheldon Gooden is, but they do commercial real estate auctions. And I had a job at 4 o'clock. And so for six months, I worked uh, in the marketing side of putting together a commercial real estate auction of over 33 million. And after that, I just real estate, real estate, real estate, I decided it was time to get my license. I had the bug. Yeah, so, so sometimes it's it amazing just the providential hand of God to, to move in our life. And he, he knew the purposes and plans that he had for Missy and and when did you start realizing that this was clicking with you? Obviously you got into a field that that meshed with kind of some of your abilities and gifting and when, what were some of the things you started seeing that said, hey, you know, I like this. This is this is I'd like to pursue this further. Uh, I think the greatest part of real estate that I fell in love with first was the marketing aspect of it. Marketing is something I love to do, uh, the creativity behind it. Um, and then I will tell you the most challenging part of first getting into it was people. People was hard. Um, I had a very tender um, personality and um, conflict was difficult and people were difficult. But in the end, it's the people that I loved the most and their difficulties um, which is why at this point I handle very difficult people well because of the fact that um, I see their needs. Uh, if you learn to have a tender heart with it, you can see beyond what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, because most of the outbursts come from other issues and you become the outlet. And when you remove yourself from that and figure out how you help them when you are the outlet, uh, you can do people a great service. Yeah, so when you were doing that, obviously, people became difficult. Was it, you remember any s situations in which you were placed like, oh man, this is hard, what? Oh yeah, yeah. and he's still my client today. <laughs> in, the first, in my first year, he made me cry. I literally was in a meeting with him, and he was an Air Force uh, officer and pilot on top of it. God love pilots. <laughs> and uh, he was he was just not nice. And I was trying to put together a contract. I was extremely nervous because it was my first year. And I finally, I just pushed everything across the table to him. And I said, that's it. I need to excuse myself. I'll be back in a few minutes. But I don't like how you're treating me. I walked out of the room, I cried my few tears. I, when I really did this, I cried a few tears and I said, okay, this is BS, I've had enough of this. I need to, one, I was ashamed of myself because he was making me lose control and making me feel like an ant. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I am doing everything in the world to help this guy 
and he is just going to stop this. I walk back in. His wife must have got a hold of him, and uh, we've been best friends ever since <laughs> and had a great transaction after that. But I had to take back control and, and learn to be a duck and shed it and not take it personally. Yeah, so you, you start experiencing success uh, yes. over the years, and um, I, I think Miss has been listed as one of the top residential agents for many years. You were with Dan Harper, I know, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Guy Chipman Company before that. Okay, Guy Chipman before that, and so and so you were, oh, you were with them for probably eighteen years or how long? Yeah. So what was it like? Because people probably wanted you to go to work for them. Did you have a lot of people wanting Missy Sakers to come to work for them? All the time. Yeah. All the time. And for me, um, there are many people in this field that company hop because it's the company that doesn't perform. It's the company that doesn't give me stuff. And as a real estate agent, you are self-employed. The company is someplace you hang your license, but you are self-employed. The company can offer you benefits, the company can uh, provide tools for you, but in the end, it is you that makes your business. And a lot of people in this business have a hard time with that. I understood that besides the fact that Deanne, who I worked for, was full of integrity, full of God in her heart, and is still my best friend today. Mm. Yeah, so what, is that why you stayed there? That is why I stayed. There's just, there wasn't a need or a reason to leave. Mm -hmm. And money is, money is wonderful, don't get me wrong when I make this statement, but um, that is not the end all be all. So what were some of the things that were more the end all be all for you then? Integrity, ethics, um, how the company was ran, how they handled problems, um, just mm -hmm. the essence of what a company is, which that was the essence of Deanne. So at some point though you said, okay, I'm ready to jump yes. and start my own. What, what prompted you to do that and what was that like for you? Uh, I had thought about doing it for a long time. Life got in the way first. Um, and it was because of the fact that I had accomplished a lot already. Um, I was at a time period in my career to where I needed to either go backwards or I needed to go forwards. I've not ever been a person that goes backwards well. And in my opinion, I was way too young to be going backwards. Um, my husband is quite a bit older than I am. Uh, I think what, Rick's nine, eight years older, seven years older, somewhere like that. And um, he's at the point to where he's done his full career on a second career and um, does not want to have as much ambition as his wife. <laughs> <laughs> and so on top of that, I've, I have um, a desire to own a business and something that um, my kids can be involved in, plus my son can hopefully someday run. Um, he's in a position to where he can't do certain things, and it was important for me to build something that had value, because as an agent, if you just quit, you have a database. Whereas when you own a company, you have something of value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've had M. Stakers Realty for a little over two, two and a half two years. years. So back in December-ish, I think it was at the end of last year, you called me mm -hmm. and said, let's get together. And what was your motivation for doing that? Selfishness. <laughs> if you want to know the first word to that, and then, and then anger. Yeah. Um, when I lost my mom, I went through a real desert period. Uh, I don't think I've ever felt so far away from God during that time period, even though I knew he was carrying me the entire time. It wasn't that he wasn't with me. It was that I just needed silence in my head. I didn't want to feel. I didn't want to care. Um, I just didn't want to think for a while. And I realized how much I missed him uh, during that time period. I really realized how much I missed him. And then in addition to that, uh, I am extremely sick and tired of the world right now with it's, it's a sin 
to utter the word God or I believe. And I'm really tired of that. I'm really tired of all of us that I wonder if you were asked to stand in a room full of strangers right now today, you didn't know a single person here. If someone just walked in the room and said, if you believe in God, will you stand? How many of you would? That's a problem today because there's a whole lot of us that don't want the world to think that we believe because it might be a problem for them. It's not politically correct. Um, it, it That just resonated in me and bothered me a lot. And so for me, it was a matter of A, pure selfishness. I've been, um, I felt like I had really gone away from God mentally, physically, and I have always been so close to him. And then in addition to that, I thought, this needs to stop. There is nothing wrong with believing. There's nothing wrong with being a believer. And Ara and I in the office had talked about it. Um, she's been in similar situations. And we said, we need to start a Bible study. Because we need it. Mm -hmm. And if we need it, I'm sure other people need it. Mm -hmm. And that was why the phone call was made. Yeah, so we, we got together and, and just said, what... What do you want? And that's one of the things that that we really found is really important in what we do in BLE is that we're not about materials. You know, God allows each of us to be in an environment where what does that workplace need? What does that person need? What do those people need? And how can we be involved? So we said, what do you need? You know, so Missy and I talked about it. And Judy teamed up with us. And so... Uh, we just started a, a study, and people are invited to come. They're not coerced to come. I don't know how many employees are there at your company. Um, I have seven employees and 15 agents. Okay, so 20-some-odd people. And so, uh, so we've opened it up to, to people inside the office, people outside the office. We have it at 8.45 every other Thursday morning. And, um, and so we came in, and we said, you don't have to bring a Bible. And so uh, the first time we met, I basically just put up a scripture on the, on the screen and said, it was Genesis 1-1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And said, if that was the only verse you knew in the Bible, what would that tell you about God? God's a worker. So we just basically started in Genesis. And we have been spending from January, we're in Genesis 3 right now, just talking about God's impact in the workplace. So just, how has that been for you? We, we have, it's a come as you are, come when you want. We have actually people from outside the office that come as well. We probably have 10 to 15 people that come uh, every week. So what is that, it's been six months now. What has that been like for you or what do you feel like it's been like for other people in your, in your sphere? For myself, I think it's done two things. A, a love for work again. Um, we all go through phases in our life that um, we get up and we feel work is drudgery or we get up and feel uh, work is a little much or um, we don't go to work with the eyes of where does God have me today and what opportunities is he going to put in front of us. And that's the fun part. That's also the part Part of that that I really missed when I got away from it for a while. Um, it is a delight to see where the opportunities are and the conversations that can be had that he opens up to you if you're open to him. Because often we aren't open to him. We're so full of life being pressed mm -hmm. on us instead of us going, wow, what does life have to offer and where is that opportunity? Um, so it's really helped myself and it's also helped with um, again perspective of working with people and remembering in our business that we help people through some of the most stressful times of their lives mm -hmm. and really looking for where is really the issue instead of just being the outlet and getting defensive mm -hmm. 
Um, I see it in in the office and other people. Um, and Ted's not here this morning, but I'll use Ted as an example because I know he wouldn't mind. Um, Ted's building his own business too. He does wholesale, and he deals with some really difficult situations of people in life <laughs> and in their worst moments and times um, because they're in huge financial problems. Mm -hmm. And it makes it his job hard. Um, and he's trying to build that business and spending some time with God and also realizing that the people he connects with is because God put him there and what opportunity can he help them with and sometimes he can help them with the real estate side of it and other times he helps them with just being a good Christian person <clears throat> and showing them God's love mm -hmm. and I think as we all know, the world can really press on you and drain you at times. I don't even know how Jesus ever did it. I really don't. Because if you, I think about some days that I have, and I'm like, oh my God, I have no emotion left in me. Mm -hmm. And to think of the world on him and the emotion he had to deal with um, mm -hmm. was amazing. And so for the little bit that we get to deal with, what an amazing opportunity that is. Yeah, and, and we've had some amazing conversations. I mean, once we start, and we've got two other ladies in the office uh, with us today as well. I mean, the, the places we go and the things that come up, and sometimes the best part is about what someone else says in the meeting that wasn't even prepared. Because there's something powerful about people meeting around the Word of God and opening their mouth and sharing it. <clears throat> And to do that in kind of an office place, we sit there, you know, we're probably the only people in this office building, the six-story office building, and we're praying and we're talking to God. And that is so powerful in the workplace. It just really is powerful. And so I, I've, seen, I've seen the relationships build and develop. And part of what I, I think is important to hear about Missy's story is, is to kind of hear the story behind the story. Because a lot of people see, I mean, Missy's picture's been on you know, front pages of magazines and things around town for, for many years. She's viewed as a, as a successful, uh, which we give glory to God, and God in Deuteronomy says he gives us the ability to produce wealth, and that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's used for his purpose. But I want to take you back a little bit more and hear more of the story behind the story with Missy. And you see the providence of God of how he brought her into this industry and the work that, he, that God does in the workplace is important, but the work that he does in the heart is so powerful. And so we're 